Welcome in, welcome in, welcome friends to the newest edition of Seahawkers What If, the most unique Seahawks preview show in the multiverse. And sure, we're not previewing a game this week. We don't need to. The San Francisco 49ers just got their butts whipped by the Eagles. We could celebrate we'll that. Take that. Yes, yes, that season, their season is over. They have no draft picks. They sold their soul. They're yeah. a lost franchise. Hey, Purdy, heal up. He did tear his UCL. That stinks. Six oh, months of recovery at bad. least. I mean, the moment I started, I'm like, yeah, that's probably a torn UCL. Dr. Clinton, medicine woman right here. I called it. You knew um, right away, right I away. Right You're away. like, I, I, well, I, based on my experience. I texted my buddies. I said, I think he tore his UCL. Got the receipts, as they say, Brandon, because, you know, you see, you see one C UCL, you see, you see them all. And with that, folks, we may not have a game. No, 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 we don't. But we're going to preview the whole next season. We're going to launch into 2023. The off season, the off season. The off, right, correct. Correct. We're not, we don't know the schedule yet. We're not, yeah, well, you know, Phil, you ain't, you ain't wrong. We're going to preview the off season. And of course, you know, if you want, find me out on Twitter at Clinton Bond, but I am of course joined by the one, the only, the great Brandon Shelton, find him out on Twitter at Seahawkers pod. And you folks know this would not be, you could not be Seahawks. What if we couldn't traverse the multiverse without the protector of the multiverse, Mr. Phil Leidick and gentlemen, this time, we're not going with Mr. Phil's questions. Maybe we do we do that at a different time. But Brandon, where are we getting the questions from for this What If Spectacular? Yeah, we thought it would be a good moment to recognize those folks who help support the flock throughout the season, who are a part of the flock, help support the show. And yes. that is our members of the flock. And so we put it out to our Discord channel, to our Facebook Ring of Honor group. This is a Flockers exclusive. The questions are from you who are supporting the show and Phil has curated the questions. So we may not get to all of them, but Phil has picked out the ones that he is going to ask. So in that way, he is still holding up his uh, his weight as part of the show. Yes, yes. And so Mr. Phil, let's talk about the most important thing first. Sans the injury to the young man, because that stinks, and heal up. What was your favorite part of the Eagles beating down the 49ers? I think it was 31 to 7. What did you revel in the most? My favorite part was probably the picture I saw of Jimmy G with the great big smile on his face. And then someone someone made a meme that said, I didn't lose, y'all lost. I thought that was, uh, <laughs> that was <laughs> the most unteam, uh, but it could have just been a bad catch <laughs> on him. But but he had that smile like, oh, it's too bad for you guys. <laughs> that's got to that's gotta be a bummer feeling to be losing right now. I saw a similar meme. It was, it was the same, same pictures of a uh, handsome Jimmy smiling away, but it was like a text thread that was like, it was like, hey, a couple of waiters called out. And he's like, yeah, you know, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, that, that's, you know, like, to, my bet, you know, sounds, sounds terrible. Not getting the punch exactly right. But basically like, you know, that's you, that that's it. I, I ain't coming in. I'm not rescuing you this time. Of course he couldn't cause he wasn't dressed, uh, you know, and the Niners had a, uh, you know, call it bad luck, but, but Brandon, you know, sure. It might be bad luck, but, uh, but the Eagles tormented them, tormented both quarterbacks, bringing the heat, you know, what was your favorite part of watching the 49ers crash and burn and burn and burn and burn? What'd you like most? Yeah, apart from the score during the game, my actual favorite thing was... Winer well, fans, winer fans. Right? <laughs> it, was, it, it is winer fans because it's not only during the game, but still after the game, the, the fact that you can get beat down 31 <laughs> to 7 and yeah. you can still find ways to to butterfly effect this game into going <laughs> your way. If maybe one decision would have gone a little bit differently during the game. Oh, Oh, if the, the Devontae catch would have been ruled not a catch by officials. And if Shanahan's, Shanahan's time management, Shanahan's time <laughs> management, if he would have called a timeout there, then, you know, maybe Purdy doesn't get hurt. And then they end up winning the game versus the Eagles rather than losing 31 to seven. That, that type of mental gymnastics is very entertaining to me. <laughs> yeah, I love it. it was fun. Yeah, that it, it was that was super fun. And I enjoyed uh watching Shanahan lose it over and over and over again on the sidelines and just get into you know pouty mad Shanahan style. That was fun. Um, and then just sitting there, and then the memes, the memes were a ton of fun. 
the pe- people who left Twitter or like, you know, I'm leaving Twitter for this reason. That Nobody's reason. left Twitter there. Yeah, everybody's well, still there. Uh, I, I happen to agree. Like the, the folks I want to talk to for the most part are still there. Uh, yeah. But the folks who <laughs> left because of whatever reasons, it's like you're missing it. It's the best. It's the only place you can get all these memes streaming in and like from randos you haven't met yet, but now you want to give them a, a hug because they dropped the most delicious meme ever. So it was just, it was glorious. The Niners can go kick rocks for an entire off season. They are, they have two injured quarterbacks, completely defunct. They have barely any cap space. They have no draft capital. They got to sign big, big name players. They are disheveled, disheveled at this point. And I could not be friggin' happier, except I'm about to get even more happy because we're going to turn it over to you, Mr. Phil. What, you know, where do you want to start with this? We got these great questions coming in from the flock. Where do you want to begin? Man, it's hard to move away from the Twitter comments and the has been <laughs> has been lady actresses that left Twitter that never said anything interesting anywhere. <laughs> and we're gonna miss them about as much as we're gonna miss the Niners in the Super Bowl. But I guess we got to move on. We got to move on. I kind of feel and- like we won the Super Bowl. <laughs> you know, just because we don't have to watch the Niners in it. Well, of that. all the teams, I w- I will say this, and there's no doubt about it. Of all the teams in our division. At this position right here, we're sitting the best. I, I I firmly believe our team is sitting the best going forward of our four teams in the division. And none of us are in the Super Bowl, so from it's all about from here out, right? So and, and I don't think good. it's partic- I don't think it's particularly close. Yeah, I really don't. I mean, look, look, the Cardinals have a whole new regime coming in and a broken quarterback who's expensive. Uh, the Rams, they, we'll see how they bounce back. The Niners, we just talked about, they're that this could be this could sting for a while we'll see as long as we get our qb situation which may, maybe is a nice segue but as long as we get our qb situation settled nice and early i think we're in the best position of the nfc west teams plus we have our throwbacks coming in 2023 so you know i think uh it's, it's all coming up millhouse for our seahawks all right so gentlemen what if we talk off season then since we're excited about it we've been looking forward to it for some time now we're getting here I, I would have had a bunch of questions, but the Flockers had so many great questions. We're just going to focus on them, and you'll still have my uh, reading voice coming with it, but it <laughs> comes from these other folks. And I, I told the gentleman, we've basically broken them down into three categories. I mean, I had to kind of crowbar a couple of them into my three categories, but they're going to they're gonna go in these categories <laughs> oh, whether they like well, it they or not. They go in. We have <laughs> three categories for the offseason. We'll start with retention and re-signing. So that'll be players from our team that there were questions about. Some people had different categories and so they'll get their questions moved about that way. Then we move to free agency, which is kind of the order that things will go. And then there's a little bit of crossover as we head toward the draft. So the first question, I have no idea who goes first. So I'll just pick someone. And then if you don't like it, you can pass it to uh, uh, the other but the we could just court. go with the person who won One. the season this year which probably would have been me if i'm going to use niners fan logic yeah. and butterfly <laughs> my way butterfly if adam had ruined those th- if adam, adam hadn't ruined those three times that he filled in you would yeah. have won six more games yeah and if phil actually <laughs> accurately scored his uh, categories correctly I threw the yellow flag improperly and you had to circle round and round me like Shanahan dropping M bombs and <laughs> yep. yeah. Okay, so it's settled. We start with me. There okay, we go. So we'll start with the right. one that would have won with Weiner Logic. <laughs> Category one, retention and re-signings. This question comes from the Discord from Frost. From Frost. He asks, Brandon, who on the D line, interior or edge, do you want to keep? Same mm. question on O-line, anyone outside our two rookies. So who on our defensive line right now, as you look at our depth chart, are you wanting to keep inside out and then also go to the offensive line or you can toss that one to Quentin? Yeah, well, if we're looking at the defensive line for the Seahawks, you know, the, the biggest question mark I think that we have, especially if we're talking 3-4, and so we're, we're specifically focusing on the the interior defenders, not talking linebackers, you know, outside linebacker type uh, players. I, I struggle to go with Puna just because it was kind of a tough season for him. And I wonder if there's a role for him necessarily in this defense moving forward. Well, and he has to sign. Wouldn't we have to sign him for like, he might be, 
his annual average salary over the past over his last contract was six million a year. And so if it's if it's at that level, then that that seems fine to me. Probably. That yeah, seems fine. So, so you want you want to get him back? You want to get Puna back for six? If, you, if, if, if it's if if it's that piece, then yes, because I mean your other options are if you're talking about guys who are up for eight for free agency who are on the defensive line, it's uh, well, he, just says, who wanna, he just says <laughs> no. who do you want to keep? So like that means you can let some of these other guys go that we already well, have, right? For for the audience, who's who's up? Like maybe, maybe that'd be a, a good way to like put it out there too. Who on the defensive line is is up for free agency? Yeah, uh, it would be, be Bruce Puna Irvin, Collier. LJ Collier, Puna Ford. And Irvin's an outside linebacker, so it depends on if you're including Right. Him. Yeah, that's true. So you might not even count him among the linebackers, but or uh, among the defensive mm. linemen. Uh, Al Woods, or is Al Woods one more year? We have him for another year, and we also have 77 um, Q Jeff. Quentin. And what about Shelby yeah. Harris? And he'd be a savings, and Shelby. Shelby and Q Jeff would be the ones that would be a savings if we let them go. Gotcha, gotcha. But the biggest right. savings with Shelby, which Shelby be a potential for a restructure. So, I mean, I, there'd be a way to potentially yeah, save him. Yeah, I could, I could see them restructuring him and playing him at a, a more limited role and hoping that some of the younger guys – that uh could could help fill in more on the interior i because this is a position that is one that i i really think that you want to draft for whether it's okay with that first pick I, if within the thir- first three picks this is i think where you want to draft and um and i say first three picks isn't in the first three first three seahawks picks yeah. so you got to let somebody go I, I i'd let lj collier go easily yeah, well, so just yeah, don't, don't resign LJ. That's a <laughs> I think LJ's uh getting his walking papers yet. Yeah, or just not getting any papers, right? So I, I think that's that's for sure. I'm totally game. I mean, you guys know me. If if Al Woods, if uh if he is he indeed a, a free agent, is he is he up? We is have him correct? for another year. We have him. Oh, okay, Q-Jeff. he's up too. Okay, great. Okay, we have cool. him, Qbet, Q Jeff, and Shelby still on contracts. I I so, so I mean yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure we keep them all. Maybe, maybe we end up making some cuts. I'd love to keep Harris. I think he's talented. Um, but of the dudes who, who are free agents, um, I have no problem keeping Bruce Irvin, if only to draft some edge. And I, I never realized like, oh, we, we may keep him in this this conversation or not. Um, I'd keep him on the conversation. He, he's setting the edge. He's playing the run. So to me, he's on, he's in this conversation. I I absolutely would keep keep Bruce and let him just be player coach. Uh, hopefully, play less, maybe, you know, maybe even less snaps than this than, than he did this year. But he was he was pretty impactful, and I do I I'm a culture guy. I think he's teaching those dudes. Um, I'm totally good with giving Bruce one one more year uh, just to keep the fabric together as we get a little younger and get a little faster, uh, and just kind of keep him as a as a little Reggie Dunbar for the the, the slap shot fans out there. We didn't yeah. touch on O line yet though. Should we uh, flip the script? Yeah, yeah. So d- just real quick, do you guys want to keep all these contracts? Monet, Al, no. Q, Jeff. Shelby. Oh, Monet is cheap. You keep Monet. Yeah. Monet is saved two point six. He's hurt bad. Point six if you let him go. He's a that... two point six if we let him. Well, go. then you can't release him if he's hurt bad. Well, what's the? Yeah. I don't. It's still yeah, don't we, I don't know. We probably don't have me. <laughs> That's a I'm great not... point. We probably don't have the option since he's hurt. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know. I, I I'm okay with letting Puna go. Um, I think he's been pretty effective, but then misused in this in this latest iteration of our defense. Yeah. Um, I'd like. I just want to get better there. So if we have to if we have to cut some dudes who've been okay, I'm okay with that. I, I would I would like to retain of all the dudes. I love me some thigh arms. You guys know yeah, I love thigh sure. arms. With that, if I had to choose, I would keep Harris over Woods. But I realize Harris can be quite a bit more expensive too. Yes. So it just depends. Um, I think Harris is a more uh, you know a, a more well rounded player at this point in their career. And if Woods could be super cheap and just clog up the uh the nose tackle ish position sure let's let's keep thigh arms i love the guy uh but i'm i'm cool with che- with some pretty big changes uh, q jeff uh, it's fine by me we could we could let him you know cut him give him the papers he's fine Four we, and a half gotta do, we need to that's, do better than five 
We have That's to do four and a half million savings if we let him go. And Al is and only I'm, three and a half. Yeah. And I'm also really okay with like a roll of the dice for a Q Jeff type player where you bring in a free agent who might be equally priced, but you might get, I know I realize Nuos is a different position, but you might catch the right guy. Yeah. I'm okay with that. And if you don't, or he's a little little less, then play him less. Figure it out. You watch what the Eagles just did and you salivate, right? I mean, you absolutely salivate to be like, holy crap, how, how do they put that together? Yeah, so that's about, the takeaway, right? Is that there's nobody that you really feel like, oh, you have to keep that guy. Yeah, there's not there's not one of those guys. I no. agree. Shelby's probably the best, but he's also the one that saves us the most. Yeah. He's the biggest difference maker on into one one real quick thing I'll say too is a couple of weeks ago when we when we reviewed the Seahawks Chiefs game, I was like, Yeah, we don't have one player like Frank Clark. And Brandon, you were like, yeah, we do. Like we kind of went, you know, back and forth on that a little bit. Yeah. Playoff Frank. Nobody like playoff it just, Frank. It's just the dude's different. He's just a different, vi- he's violent. He's yeah. really violent. And I'm not, you know, saying good, bad, or ugly. And like you said, uh, you know, playoff Frank is, is a different animal. Altogether. Yeah. Nwosu is as good as him in the regular season. And Nwosu is But it's playoff Frank that's just nuts. I don't know. Well, what we haven't there. really seen playoff Daryl Taylor. We haven't seen play after Earl Taylor much. Yeah. Not much, right. not much. All right. Well, How about the O-line? Right. You guys got guys we have to keep on the O-line besides our, our two, you know, the the wonderful rookies. Yeah, I'll give a quick, my quick answer is, yeah. I mean, like, I don't think we should be, I mean, d lose what, got one more year in his rookie contract anyway, yes. right? Yeah. All right, so he ain't going anywhere. Um, besides that. No, I mean, I'd like, I'd like us to retain beefy boy, Phil Haynes. If it's cheap. Sign him. He's free agent. So we'd have to sign him. So if it's, if it's, if, uh, you know, like, right. Current's cheap. Nobody is banging on the door for Phil Haynes. No, no, exactly. And and we're talking, we're talking retention. I mean, no, I don't, I don't think there's, there's nobody that I think could, could possibly, uh, that we could possibly cut where I would shed a tear right now. Yeah. Current's a good value. Current's a good value. He's very inexpensive for a backup i have zero problems keeping current yeah. it's he's going to cost next to nothing all right let's move to the next question then we have designed pete's beach house question here i guess we'll start with clinton on this one okay do you think that pete will lean into and this is kind of a similar one to what we have on the uh the facebook but will lean into the three, four scheme as he has previously stated and let go of current okay players that really don't fit that scheme to open up room and money for those that do. That's how she asks it. So you understand the question there on that? Yeah. One? Yeah. I understand the question. Uh, my, my short answer is um, I believe they will try. I believe that he, he will try to honor what he said on the podium at the end of the year. They're okay. like, no, we're going to stick with this. They're not firing. You know, there's been a lot of firings across the NFL um, and which happens every year. Of course, we are not after, you know, Clint hurts staying there. We'll see what happens with the sigh one way or the other. Um, it, it's a, it seems we're going to, we're going to try to get our version of this three, four and put our stamp on that. And I think Pete and John were very honest uh, about not having the right pieces in place yeah. uh, in, in their, you know, postseason interviews. Um, with that, do I think it'll work fully? And do I think that Pete will honor it for an entire season if it goes off the rails the first five, six, five or six games? No, that's where I don't have confidence. Yeah. Like I'm confident they'll try. Um, game five, and and we're getting just run over by you know the, the, the Titans when we're, we're partying in Nashville. Uh, I, I could quickly see Pete just going back to his old ways that have worked pretty well. And oh, by the way, work really well for the 49ers, work really well for the New York Jets. It's it's not like it's a bad system when you when you have the right personnel. So that's my answer. I think he'll try. I mean, don't you want to lead in a way you believe in, Brandon? I mean, like, mm-hmm. like I believe in this, we're doing this all out. Or do you like just lots of room for flexibility and fallback options? What do you prefer in a leader? Well, I, I think that... What we've heard from Pete in the past is that when he says that they're going to do something, he, in in terms of philosophical ideas and plans for the off season, he doesn't lie to us in the same way that he lies to us about injuries that, uh, (laughs) because those are the, those are the (laughs) other things that he wants to kind of remain a competitive advantage during the season. Something like, 
the style of defense. Uh, he's not going to lie about wanting to be fast or, you know, have personnel that fits the type of scheme that they want to do. So I, I, I trust him when he talks about the, the vision. Um, we like want Clint terrible said, players, guys. We're going to get terrible players. We want people that <laughs> don't show up to work. They're going to do a bad job. So you can believe me. I, I haven't heard him say that. But I, I think that he, I, I did hear some recognition of maybe not having the exact right type of personnel for yeah. the system that they wanted to run. And I think that that's something that going into this offseason, if Desai sticks around along with Hurt, that those are the positions then they can identify. And if you see guys you know, like Puna Ford not re-signed, uh, if you see them signing multiple linebackers so that Cody Barton's more of a, a backup role, I think that would give you a, a bit of a clue. And, you know, what they do with Ryan Neal could be a part of that mm. too. And I could really see them going with Neal, going with Quandre, and then using Jamal Adams in more of that linebacker style role. Next to Brooks, um, yeah. Right. Yeah, that'd be beautiful. I just hope he listens to Yoda and he doesn't just try. I hope do or do not. Yeah. Yes, uh, that's that's what I hope on this. There is no try, right? <laughs> let's let's go to this next one here. Uh, it's a really long question from Frost. Here we go, Brandon. Should we re-sign Penny? Yes. <laughs> okay. I don't think it's going to be that difficult to re-sign Penny. And if you don't re-sign Penny, I think you're looking at the potential of maybe drafting a running back in the first couple rounds and I would rather stick with Penny. Maybe you draft a running back late round then and, and have him compete with Dallas and Homer and go that way. But I I'd like to see Penny back and see if he can put another healthy season, a yeah. healthy season together. You think, you think we should Clinton? Yeah, Penny? I I think so. I, I put the caveat on there that I don't think we could pay him more than two and a half million, yeah. you know, like it's, it's gotta be, it's gotta be fairly low, but 2 million. It, it, cause, cause he got 5 million this year, maybe even five and a half million. Yeah. And he was obviously out majority of the year. He got that on the, uh, on the tailwinds of the last five or six games yeah. previous year where he was phenomenal and he was off to an okay, you know, pretty good start. Um, oh yeah. We were better with him. There's we're better off. And, I, with and him. I think we would be, you know, I think it would, it would give us that, give us that, that, that different change of pace. The other thing too, is I don't expect Travis Homer back. I don't think, I don't think, I think he'll be the odd man out. And, you know, if, so if you came back in with a room of, of canine Penny and, uh, and DJ Dallas, and then, you know, an ensemble God, Godwin could be in there as your forward returning kicks, et cetera, et cetera. Um, that'd be good. That that's solid. And you just go in with the expectation that we don't expect in the last 17 games just because he has it. Uh, and if he does bonus upside, you might have a very dynamic, dynamic runner. And to go back to the well of the Eagles, the Eagles, Eagles th throw out three running backs, right? They got Sanders, Gainwell and Scott all could run the ball effectively. Plus, plus Hertz could run the ball when he's healthy too. So um, I'm into the penny idea. I would, uh, I'd welcome him back. Um, and I just, I, I, a question for you guys. What do you think the max he would get from a different team annual contract? It, it wouldn't be more than four. Yeah. Hmm. Can, I don't can think. we do a, can we do like a catcher strategy or, you know, Penny, you got, you got the primary snaps this game. K9, you're going to get the alternate the next game. K9, you got the primary pin or even give him a rest day. Give Penny a rest day every so often. Is it can you, like a pitcher? Can you do teams ever do that with running backs? Uh, no, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, the, the Cowboys should probably do that at this point with Zeke and just, just give the ball. I mean, I, that was a tragic, that was that stunk when Pollard Pollard snaps his leg. Right. So now he has to go That's into his, brutal. uh, yeah. his off season as a free agent with a broken leg and rehab stinky for him. Um, no, I mean, they don't, they don't do it. it it'd be, I, I'm, what, I would be super, super cool with just, uh, with a 60, 60, 30, 10, uh, canine, you know, as as the sixty percent lead dog, yeah, yeah that will be that'd be a okay. I'd be all right with that, especially with what we saw with canine down the stretch. I think he could be a, a three down back. He's uh, going to learn a lot. Yeah, he'll get enough rest too, and he'll he'll have some confidence on how to 
be more decisive. If he's more decisive, he's he's a great back, no doubt. Next question. Here we go. Uh, this one kind of brings up a multiverse aspect. You know, what if we go into the multiverse and this doesn't happen? What if Gino doesn't get signed? What if we can't pull it off and re-sign Gino? Who is our quarterback? This comes from Lloyd Zilla. Lloyd Zilla mm. asking you this one, Clinton. Okay. Um, this is a, a this is this is Hugh, good 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 gentleman out there on Twitter and on the Discord too. Um, and and Hugh is the one with the daughter who's who's kept everybody in check, right, right Brandon? Yeah. yeah. Very nice, very nice. Doing doing the service to make sure that the folks are awesome. not betting, you know, the, the pick and leak protector. Yeah, the, yes, yes. Uh, good job. What's her name? Do you remember off, offhand? Evie. Evie. All right. Good job, Evie. I'm listening and, and I support you. Um, so you back to your question. To me, this is potential worst case scenario that also has some of the most interesting wrinkles. Um, if we can't get it done, I am 100% totally cool. QB at five and we take our QB at five. Okay. Like, I think that's, if we can't get Gino done and we're heading into the draft. Um, that's what you want. That's also what you expect. Cause his question is, what do you yeah. expect? But yeah, yeah, no, that's, I would, that's okay. what I would expect. I would expect that at that point, you might be looking at Stroud. You might be looking at Levis. Uh, you might even be looking at a potential to trade down a little bit and still, still get a QB you want. Maybe right. Depends on who you, who your trade partner is like one or two spots. Um, that that would be okay. It would I I would expect that if we can't sign Gino, then Schneider and team would fully commit to the to the inexpensive rookie quarterback, hopefully that they love, and use the cap space elsewhere. And because that was the, the plan, out. right? We all know that was the plan. Right, that was the plan a couple months ago, right? When the trade so, with Russ happened, when that was the plan. Right at that point, maybe maybe you bring back uh, you know you bring back Drew Lock at, at something reasonable, and you let Drew Lock and and the rookie go compete to see who is a starter. It's possible. How about you, Brandon? What will happen if we can't get it done with Gino? What you do is you give Mark Sanchez a call and Sanchez. see about him coming out of the broadcast booth to revitalize his post-Jets career and tear it up with his former college coach, Pete Carroll. Oh, Sanchez. yeah. Sanchez, I love it. That's a great idea. Okay. I mean, might, if, we're... if we have to watch the hose, we might as well watch uh... – Sanchez, I don't know. Next question. <laughs> you're not you're not excited about Drew, huh? Oh, I, everything I've ever seen from the guy. I don't want to see him take starting for my team. <laughs> I feel no like way. I didn't get to see him enough in preseason just because of how things played out. I I would have liked to see a little bit more of him, but I'm happy with Gino. It yeah. wouldn't be that hard to franchise tag Gino, so I I don't know. The only strategy I could see it kind of blowing up in the Seahawks' face based on what Hugh's thinking here is, is if they don't franchise him, allow him to go to free agency, thinking that no, not enough teams are going to want him, that they could get him in under contract under that franchise tag number. Oh, yeah. You know, say they want to, maybe their max on him is 25 mil a year average rather yeah. than that franchise tag. Then that could be the thing and and ha another team comes along and says we're going to pay gino and tampa bay would um, take him for that you know there's, yeah, there's have you guys have... been following gino on twitter he's he looks have a little seen... salty today today yeah. he looks a little I, yeah salty. he's when he sends out you know retweets and with the little you know looky emoji about yeah these His four stats. quarterbacks, yeah. 4,000 yards, 30 touchdowns. And it's yeah. him. What was it? Him, Burrow, Allen, Mahomes. He can yeah. throw that out all he wants. It just depends if there's not another team that's willing to give him more well, than the Seahawks. We, we've talked about he's... this. We talked about yeah. this ad nauseum, though. There's always right. another, you know, Star Wars. There's always a bigger fish. There's always one team, you know, and, right. and to say they're they're dumb or they're smart doesn't really matter. It's like. There was a team to go pay Christian Kirk what he got paid and reset the whole wide receiver market. Everybody screamed it was the dumbest contract ever. Maybe it was. He turned out to be really good. He yeah. was he was a value for the Jaguars, but he still reset the market because there was one team who was like, "Yeah, we'll spend that money." My, I mean, there's a I, lot of yeah. Two a could retire. Two could like, retire. They'd want him. The 49ers have no money, but they would want him. Uh, somebody Tampa will Bay, give him uh, thirty-five million a year. Somebody will. And if I if see Gino's not... propaganda already working on Clinton. I listen. I will well, hold on. I, hit, I hit haven't the, needed hit any. the videotape. I... The Atlanta game, game two. I was like, resign him, 
put a contract in front yeah. of this guy right now, do yep. it. It's going to get more and more and more expensive because he, I remember. you can just see the guy can play. Um, yep. You know, I, was, I wasn't exactly a early, early adopter. Uh, but once I saw enough on film, like he, he's really good. Just pay I was him, mad. Pay him. I was mad last summer that we didn't sign him for two seasons. If we're going to mm. sign him for seven, I was like, we need to sign two of those because it doesn't hurt. We're looking at a rookie next year. We need a guy that we know is decent. We saw him in the Rams game. We saw him in the three other games that Russell was hurt. He's a good quarterback. He w- didn't look as great, like MB Gino great yet. But he's a good quarter. We're going to sign him for one, get him for two. I, I did not understand that. And then that uh, I'm sure that John kind of wishes that he'd done that by now, but uh, yeah. Yeah. That's all right. But listen, I think we all want, Gino back. And if he's yeah. not, then youth it's movement. It's going to be tough though. He, he might be 40 million. I'm, I'm a little worried. I think we, but if that's what it would take, then we probably just need to franchise him and figure well, out. Well, the thing, to, just two seconds salaries. on that. Cause I know we got yeah. a lot of questions, but two seconds on that yeah. is with, with the franchise tag, my understanding is every single penny goes against the cap. You can't hide yep. or run from that. Right. That's right. So if you do a three-year deal where the APY is 40, but you do the magic of the cap and it's actually a $27 million hit, well, then it's actually a $27 million hit. You know, it's like that's 5 million back in your pocket, 5.4 million back in your pocket that you could spend this year. So I, I don't know. Schneider, it buys you time it, though. The thing about the franchise tag is it buys you time. You can yeah. wait and see what happens in the draft. Mess if things it. go your way in terms of draft picks, then you can release Gino and not pay him if he hasn't signed his. If he uh, hasn't signed it. If he if has, he, as long as he hasn't him. signed yeah. it. Right. If he hasn't signed yeah. it, then you have, then you. But if right. he signs it, then you have to trade him, which somebody would probably for that. Price. Right. And yeah. they could probably put off the signing of it saying we're pushing this off because we want to sign a multi-year deal. This just gives us more time to go through yeah. the offseason program and then get a contract in place before the, the deadline in whatever it is, the end of no, June or something like that. That is the point. That is exactly the point, Brandon. And that's, I oh, think right. it's very likely to go that way. Exactly the scenario you're talking about. So not the Sanchez. No, but that that was a fun uh, fantasy. Okay. All right, so we're I, still in, I wrote up. Well, we're it? still in section one, so we're gonna have to go quickly on this person's the final section one here. This is Luke G zero eight zero eight, and Luke has asked, "Should we make Sean decide the full time defensive coordinator? It seems a lot of other teams value him highly, and it would suck to lose him." <laughs> I, I think that you don't have to because he's already the assistant head coach. Okay. And so it's kind of, I, I think more out of deference to decide to allow him to go in and interview for these jobs than they it is take to him say, though, right. If they give him a coordinator job, they could take him. Sure. I, I think he that, doesn't have to say yes. If it's a coordinator job, even though it's assistant head coach, but I'm not, they're sure. already allowing him to interview from yeah. how I understand yeah. it. So they would, they would just say no, if they didn't feel like the job was at a higher position, I think then they could say no, yeah. but I, I just don't think that that's the way Pete is. I think he yeah. allows his guys to do what he want to do what they want yeah. and doesn't put those types of restrictions. So I, I don't think you need to. And I think it might even be, a downgrade considering just how they've titled the positions. I, and who knows how the inner workings as far as the, uh, how those guys all work together between him and, and hurt and, and that sort of thing. But I, I, I think it's unnecessary. You agree, yeah. Clinton? Uh, yeah, I just, I, I would like to see this is main, but maybe for a different reason, like if we're not going to make a move and it's, it's pretty evident we're not from what Peter said, then then just I'm I'd prefer we just give Clint Hurt just you know bring back this bring back the squad as you had it uh, if you can if you can do that with the sun and uh let Clint Hurt get his second year and and see it see what can happen in this second year with with some different personnel I mean who knows we 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 could be 12 months from now having a discussion about like oh is is Clint Hurt a, a you know is he leaving the Seahawks as a absolute head coaching football candidate you know Kellen Moore was the hottest thing in football and he gets released by the Cowboys which is stupid they should be firing you know McCarthy because yeah. he's a bad head coach but they release Moore and like half an hour later the Chargers bring him in as a, as the, the, the the offensive coordinator so I'm just saying things are pretty fluid it would not shock me if a year from now Clint hurts in a much more powerful position because it worked. The whole thing worked better because our personnel got better. 
that's my that's my guess all right category two free agency clinton the first one comes from thad is radical who gave us a really nice note but because it's so long he's gonna make me try out my speed reading efforts <laughs> and so listen as i read this out on what will sound like 2x Good afternoon to you. Thank you for considering all of our questions. Very sweet of you all to quickly preface. I consider the Hawks lack of urgency in acquiring and developing a top level center unnerving. Similar to properly assembled baseball teams, your talent up the middle, as they say, should be your strongest and most talented players. We have a true RB1 in Ken Walker, a top 10 quarterback in Geno, an investment in Jordan Brooks, and a likely upgrade at the other interior linebacker spot, and the most expensive safeties in the league patrolling center field. But since trading Max Unger, their biggest spend was a later a second round pick on Posick, who for better or worse, most certainly was not developed into a long-term starter. The Hawks seem content to clip coupons when acquiring a truly great center. What do you think their motivation could possibly be for being so frugal? Is the difference between 2023 Austin Blythe and Creed Humphrey negligible? How important is an above average center to any new success the Seahawks wish to quickly find? Does center matter, Clinton? <laughs> um, maybe, maybe. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, and thank you. Who uh, was, who was the, uh, the asker? That, is, the radical. that, that is, that, is radical. That, that, that is radical. Okay. Thank you, Thad. Um, the answer is maybe, and that's because, it just depends on where do you want to improve. If we, meaning, uh, if we really improve our our right guard, because Gabe Jackson's not, I don't think he'll come back. If we really improve our right guard, then how much do you actually have to have to improve center is what it boils down to for me. Or you kind of flip it. You know, if we really go after and improve our center, uh, how much do we have to improve our right guard or spend big there? Um, I am I am of the belief that centers do matter. Uh, and and I would apps and just seeing the hmm, the slog we've been through since the uh, the Unger years, right? The opposite of the Wonder years. There, um, I would I would prefer that we spend some of that draft capital, uh, that early fairly early draft capital, and go get the center of our future, nice and cheap, lock them up, and do not have a Creed Humphrey 2.0. So okay. yes, they matter. That's the way I'd like them to go about it, um, and because. You know, looking at the the free agents for center, there are some, but it's pretty thin. They're either old or they're like, meh. You know, is yeah. it really an upgrade? I'm not. I'm not convinced. So draft for me, and yes, go get a center. So don't pull the lever on free agency. Wait for the draft. Boy, you I can look so. at Patrick Mahomes and his confidence in Creed Humphrey and be like, boy, that does look kind of nice and tasty, mm -hmm. doesn't it? Uh, do you agree, Brandon? Center matters. Well, it's easy to answer yes when I, I mean. Do either of you guys know who the starting right guards for the Eagles and the Chiefs are in the Super Bowl? Good question. It's a good question. Uh, yeah, the right got, guard. It's the Justin right guard maybe. Reed, the two best centers in the league. <laughs> and, and, and you got, <laughs> you got Jason Kelsey and Creed yeah, Humphrey at center yeah. for both the starting Super Bowl uh, teams. So boy. if you don't think it matters, you, you just look at who's starting yeah. in the Super Bowl coming up here in two weeks. And Kelsey's going to be a free agent. Yep. Now, I, I wouldn't advocate going out and getting him because he's 35 years old. He still moves yeah, pretty well, though. I don't he know. still moves pretty well. I like him. I like um, him. You have Rodney Hudson out there. And then, and so when Clinton talks about the olds, uh, those those are your two guys. <laughs> Sometimes they're and, the best, though. But I mean, Creed was different. Oh, but a lot yeah, they, I mean, Rodney Hudson's good, too. And they, he's been dealing with injury issues, though. So hurt, you do yeah. have. And Kelsey's dealt with injury issues too in the latter parts of his career. So you're getting to the point to where those concerns, you know, does the talent uh, increase outweigh that maybe? And you also have to try and get them to come to Seattle. So I, I feel like draft is probably the best way to go. And I think you could go out and get uh, a discount guard or two um, and then, I would rather see that draft pick on the offensive line spent than at center. Gotcha. One, one quick thing I'll say about Hudson versus Kelsey is while Hudson's actually quite a bit younger still, he, he got, you know, yes, he's been hurt, but then he's looked a lot slower. Now, is that just a, the fact that, well, he was hurt he may, maybe not fully back or just not fully vested in, in the Cardinals, just not fully vested in, in that decision he made. And, um, He's in a kind of a crappy situation on a team that was just lost, didn't 
did not have any sort of a, a head coach or a shepherd there and a quarterback who clearly just he's just whatever just everybody will rag on the guy for playing video games but now he's hurt too right versus kelsey um I mean, Kelsey just seems like a bad man still, you know, like he, like he's, like you said, still moves real well. So if we were able to finagle him uh, re, for, via free agency, I wouldn't be oh, too upset for a one, a one year or two year deal. Yeah, sure. He's old, but still, still damn good. You don't have to be uh, at that position. You don't have to be running a five, two anymore. You could just be good at what you do. And you uh, I think here. he is. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, it does make me wonder too, how much of that, you know, what went into that decision for Hudson? Because obviously he was traded uh, for, that's how the Cardinals acquired him. And mm -hmm. so once he was there, it was like, well, they're offering me a three-year, $30 million restructured deal. I'm already here, may as well take the money. Maybe there would be some motivation to to play at a different place. But yeah, uh, that's one of those things that's tough to know. I, I think when he went there too, he went into what looked like a really good situation. And sure. that was a big signing. We we were talking about like, wow, they got they got a star. Yeah. Um, because at that point he was probably the top rated center in the league, like one or yeah. two. And then we got way, Gabe Jackson. There. <laughs> <laughs> and, Correct. And letting him go saves us six and a half. So that, that might help us with some of the cap money we he's, need to send Gino's way. He's yeah, gone. Jackson. It was it wasn't a bad move. He was serviceable. He's gone. Yeah. Second question. I think it's the second question. Uh, Clinton, of all the current free agents, if you could just have your pick, who would you most like to sign? Now, I'm asking this. I don't know how um, uh, Lloyd Zilly intended it. I'm asking yeah. this as we've moved on from retention and resigning. It's like an outside free agent. Maybe I I'm going to just assume that's what was meant there. Who would you most like us to sign and why of all the current free agents? Yeah, I mean, there's a few. Um, <clears throat> there's a few. I mean, like, there's, there's, the, there's the absolute – you know, what was that? The, the Sears wish list. What was the old book we got as kids for, for oh, Christmas? Yeah, the so catalog, the Sears catalog. Yeah. The, 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 the wish book, the, you know, the Christmas, uh, whatever that was. Uh, maybe, maybe it was Sears. Maybe it was. Uh, you're Macy's. sitting on Santa's leg, I guess, is what you're doing. Is that what you're Yeah, saying? it was, it was. So if we're going to go there and go to, go to the, the wishing well, I mean, the, then give me Hargrave, right? Like give me, give me the nasty Eagles, uh, you know, lineman right there. That's just so friggin' nasty and so critical to causing that disruption. Yeah. But he's gonna cost him. He's gonna cost an arm and a leg as he should. But there are some other dudes. Like, um, there are some linebackers out there too. I'm totally, totally cool. Obviously, you want to blend with your your draft capital yeah. with savvy signings. I think linebacker is just a place where you don't gotta go bananas. You shouldn't. You don't gotta go bananas and spend crazy money. And yeah. still get skilled people in. So there are a few at the very, you know, some of the top on that list is I think uh, David Long from the Titans. The dude's just like, he's really good in run D and he's, he's in his, he has a crazy good win rate. Now it depends what scheme are we playing. Are we in this? Are we in that? Uh, you know, I, I don't, I'm not going to sit there and, and, you know, uh, break it down too much, but I could look at a player like David Long, be like he's damn good at football. He's, he's a really good linebacker on a team that's been good, mostly, um, you know, just being a hard nosed team. And then I think, I think the uh, pronunciation for, uh, is it uh, Okariki? I think that's how you pronounce his Okarike, name. Okarike, I think. Okarike, yeah. linebacker from the Colts, 27 years old. So, and a really stout run defender. Okay. You know, so there's a couple of those linebackers there too, where I tried to take this question and think about positionally. Yeah. Where do I not want them to draft? And where do I think you can get a quality dude in free agency that's not going to break the bank? So that's where I was going. It wasn't, you got your wish list. But beyond that, I want to go to some more reality things. And there's some good linebackers that I think we could get without killing uh, our entire our entire spend. All right, Brandon, to keep it moving, I'll just ask Josh's question to kind of guide you here. Who yeah. are your uh, current top three free agents he has center and guard, but we already talked about center quite a bit. On guard prospects, your top three guard prospects um, that you're interested in. in Josh oh, Jones. gosh. Are we talking about draft or are we talking? Uh, he oh, asked the both ways. Yeah, he asked. Um, Dealership, how about that? Yeah, he did free agent or draft. So I guess uh, maybe you could just go with what your preference is or you had your eyeball on some guys in the free agency and draft. Uh, take it yeah. how you like. Well, I think I already said that I'd, I'd rather go 
with uh, a center in the draft. And so, yeah. and I, I don't have any names of guys oh. that I, I'm watching in particular. He yet asked for names we, too. So, yeah, yeah I know. Well, we still, yeah, yeah, we still have the senior bowl. We still have the yeah, combine. There's like so much more information that I, I feel like I need to take in before I start uh, spouting off names of, of guys who I, I want to, uh, as, as future centers, but we're all um, going to trust your pick because you wanted Creed. We didn't get Creed. <laughs> <laughs> and we forever regret that John Shiner didn't have you on the phone and uh, take your guy. Yeah, well, I think there were more than a few of us who were were probably yeah. calling that. And the thing is, is that this is a position then where I I don't really care that much because somebody on the offensive line kind of has to be the worst. And so, shoot, could you pick up Curran and move him into guard and have him be okay? Yeah, probably. Could you bring back Phil Haynes, have him compete for that spot against current? Sure. And he'll play so, some games and then get hurt. And then we'll have to have something else. <laughs> right. You, you, well, you want to have a lot of depth at that position. I mean, his this, name is Phil. And, he gets hurt. I understand. This goes with the name. This is what I'm saying. I, so really, I, I'm more focused on improving at center than I am at the right guard spot. If you, cause well, Jackson's even still under contract for this next year. And so I think that's with the assumption that Gabe Jackson's probably moving on based on what we saw from this past season. So yeah, there's, there's a lot to, uh, to think about here, but it's really that, that it's so far down kind of on my list of places to improve because there's so many higher value positions on the defense or more Im higher impact positions that I think are on the defensive side that yeah. you could find a dude to play guard. So do you have a defensive? Cause I would ask Clinton cause a fish 1990 asks about defensive mm. free agents that should be yeah. signed or be on our wish list. Uh, besides bringing back Nwosu, I will tell a fish uh, Nwosu is signed. We might want to extend him, but he is signed in the next year. Did you have any defensive free agents that are on your wish list right now, Brennan? Uh, Deron Payne from okay. the commanders would be on my list of interior defensive tackles that have that pass rush ability. Also have that, some of that run stopping ability too. I, I think he would be, I yeah. think he might be a fit. That'd be a good one. Okay. Yeah. Clinton. Yeah. Snap Dan. Snap Dan asks, will Dwayne Eskridge or Derek Young step up next year and be that much needed wide receiver three? Will one or the other uh, do you have some confidence that they will? Where where would you put your percentage guess at that they could be the RW3 for us? Um, yeah, it's not that high. And it's not because I don't think, um, and it's not because I don't believe Dariq can do it because I think he showed some good, really, with the touches he got, I thought he was good. Uh, it was something where seemingly he probably deserved some more touches down the stretch, especially especially when when Goodwin got hurt. Um, so, you know, good, good wins a free agent, so you could bring him back, but he's really more at this point of a really solid fourth, uh, fourth option and not a third option. Um, and I have no confidence in Diaskar to this point. I just, I just can't, it's, yeah. I, I want, I want to believe, but I just don't have it. So overall, I'd only put it at like something like 12 to 15% that, yeah. that, that the combination comes out of one of those, one of those two dudes versus some, um, some options that are out there that I think yeah. are intriguing from the drafts and or um there's actually one one free agent wide receiver that that i i do i like a lot and i think he, he could play in, in a nice in, in a wide receiver three role uh and i i like jacoby myers i live in connecticut i get to watch as much patriots as i want to and on a non-dynamic team where they either had Brady at the very, very tail end or, you know, Mac Jones year one, year two, uh, Jacoby Myers can play football. He's good. That possession receiver type, uh, type guy, but it's just like style wise, is that what we want in a wide receiver three or, or do we want to try and capture that super quick twitchy guy that I've been pounding the table for, for a couple of years that I thought we would get with D Eskridge. Yeah. And so far that's been a swing and a miss, unfortunately. So, but unfortunately my confidence level is not high in those two dudes to be the third wide receiver. I would love it to be young, but. You think I, he's I just, got a better shot than Eskridge young. Do you think he'd be the. I, that's tough. <laughs> I, I don't know because. If you such... take health out of the factor, then you would. Yeah. I, 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 I look at body type and I look at like what they can do. And I always thought they got young as a backup to DK Metcalf. 
Like, it's like, okay, if Metcalf goes down, we, we need that big body guy. Um, I thought he was our Ricardo Lockett replacement kind of is what I thought young was going to be. Uh, he has been as far as the yeah. special teams contributions, just, you know, sure. but that, really. that is an RW, a WR four, unless it's a key situation in the super bowl. Um, he's mostly an, an RW four is, yeah. is when you think Ricardo Lockett. Yeah. And that's not good enough either. You know, like if we really want to upgrade uh, that, that position, I think we have to like kind of stop settling for, for that kind of like, okayness and look at some other teams where their, their third receiving threat, whether it's tight end or their third receiver is a lot more dynamic than that. And that's where I, that's where I kind of fall down a little bit with uh, where young is currently. I like how Clinton's favorite free agent wide receiver is like the second best one on the market going into this off season. Like you're, if you want Jacoby Myers, you're going to pay him, you're, you're going to pay him upwards get... of 10, $12 million a year. Oh. But that's not that much money for a good wide receiver. I mean, Kirk got 18, right? Yeah, so, but is that what you want to spend your offensive money on? Or I'd would you rather get Rodney rather Hudson? Go no, I don't want Rodney Hudson. Rodney Hudson's <laughs> old. He's I understand, injured and slow, but you know? spend it on a position where Listen, it's I, a I, consistent I'm position I'm, that I'm is going to have there. an impact. I'm, he's a 26 year old receiver who's darn. You're just good. being been, mean, Brandon. You're just. I'd <laughs> rather pay. I'd, I'd rather pay a solid linebacker than a third wide receiver. I yeah. agree. I, I am in a pecking order. I agree. Go cheap I'm, on Goodwin or I'm throwing one out there that I think is interesting, and I don't think he'll. I think he will be underpaid for how good he is because his stats and especially his touchdowns have been crap because he's been on some really non dynamic Patriots teams, and. He's good. He he's a very good receiver. So I think some team will get a good deal. With Jacoby Myers to be like, oh yeah, you know, 900 yards and seven touchdowns later, like, ooh, that would have been helpful. I I expect Myers to be this off season's Christian Kirk to where he'll get a contract and you'll go, whoa, somebody yeah. paid way too much for him. Hmm. I'm a little afraid. Yeah, we need a I, I, we need a dynamo. We need to add a young dynamo. And if it's not, I, I I'm with Snap Dan. If it's not Eskridge or Derek Young here, one of the young guys, we need to get one. Like I'm not, I don't think Goodwin Goodwin is a good enough third wide receiver, but that doesn't solve our future situation. Right. And that's the that's why I think we need to go with the resources from the draft. But that's just a free fill take. I don't know if anybody cares. Kevin Russell, Brandon, he asks who. This is from the uh, Facebook Ring of Honor. Who should nice. we watch the senior bowl for as potential Seahawks? This is a really good question because I actually interviewed yeah. the senior bowl executive director. Listen and so that, you go Kevin. back, you can listen to that <laughs> interview, Kevin, and we'll cover uh, a bunch of dudes that uh, you can, you can probably watch there, but yeah, senior bowl coming up. And uh, if let's see, if I can get back to where, uh, some of the guys that I think we talked about as potentially being, oh, one guy that we didn't talk about that I know that I want to watch, though, is Osiris Torrance, who yes, is an offensive yes, lineman out of Florida. Yes. I thought you were going to talk about him before when we talked about guards. Like, that's, yeah, he's a big yeah. boy, man. Yeah, he's a, he's a dude to watch and, and see what he does here at the Senior Bowl. Um are we, what was the question? Just anybody that we're watching for somebody, just some names as we watch the senior bowl to throw out there. I think you should listen to your interview. Yeah. That was a really good one to help with that, but yeah. And we didn't actually cover a lot of offensive linemen, unfortunately in that interview, because there, there, but there's a lot of guys too, that I'm, I'm not sure if they're going to be tackles at the NFL level, or if they're going to move into guards, but there's guys like uh, Matthew Bergeron out of Syracuse, Dewan Jones, Ohio state, uh, Jalen Duncan, Maryland, uh, Cody mock was the one guy that, uh, was really talked up, um, uh, by Jim on that interview, just as a, a more of a personality type guy, personality type guy. But I think he does kind of, uh, expect to play at the, at the tackle position at the NFL. And since we're good there, uh, you may not look out for a whole lot of those guys, but um, yeah, there, there's a few names at offensive line and yeah, go back, check out the interview and and we cover quite a few different names. I do want to say one from, from the senior bowl has been getting a lot of love and that might be love from like EJ Snyder from uh bootleg and just, just some others like Josh to does a lot of, a lot of mocks and see him on there too. Would so, it would potentially solve our wide receiver three challenge also is uh Zay flowers from BC. 
So oh, yeah, that five, five foot 10, super you know, just quick, amazing hands. And um, there's you know, so just, many just, tasty wide receiver prospects on that day too. Yeah. Just, you know, a dude, a dude who like, I think in a system like ours, um, we just, we needed some, we needed a, what we need a third guy to be able to do is to, which is like the NFL, you know, like this is a dull thing, but like create, sep- get, create separation, like get open. get open, be able to do, imagine being able to, to kind of mimic lock it, but, but yes. in a young, a younger twitchier version right now. Um, when you still got DK work in the outsides for the most part, you can still get young as your four or a good one as your four as a burner. And you get that other dude who could really work the middle, like really, really work the middle. So Zay we need Flowers Lockett's is, understudy. We need Lockett's understudy. Yeah, sure. that that too, right? And, and again, when we looked at D. Eskridge two years ago now, we were like, ooh, like he's a little bit more like Lockett than he is, you know, the others. So uh or 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 Bo Melton, I think we were talking. They were like, Oh, right. Bo Melton, that's our guy. That that's that's who it was. And then of course Bo Melton got snagged off the practice squad. So uh, but anyway, Zay Flowers would be would be the dude that so far, like I've got a lot more to learn, a lot more to watch. I'll yeah. fall in love a thousand more times, but the the early vibes are going towards Zay, and that's a fun name too. Yeah, it's kind of early for us to get into draft everyone out there listening, but we're gonna we're gonna give it a shot. You had some good draft questions. So we'll just sure. hit these kind of like as a entrance as we begin considering here's a question that i think does fit with that uh, clinton kevin russell's second part was with the draft quality should we try and use our five to trade for more picks to get more personnel and use our cap space to pick up a good veteran um well, I think we should definitely use our cap space to pick up a good veteran uh regardless right i think well, we're going to the only way that question makes a lot of sense to me, and I think the best sense is instead of signing Gino, should right. we draft a quarterback at five and use our cap space for something else? Like, I, I don't know. I, that seems to be where that question could be going. Is, is that, is that how it sounded to you? It, it does. And I, but I, I also think, so I think it's like, it's just, if, if the Gino stuff is fuzzy, Oh no, I misread it. I'm sorry. Trade, okay. trade our five. I, I apologize. That's okay. Uh, Do it again. I can't read. I can't read it. So I read okay. it again with yeah. the draft quality. Should we try and use our number five to trade for more picks to get more personnel and use our cap space to pick up a good veteran? So he is talking about picking up Gino. He's a good veteran. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, that could be right. Um, so to, just for me, it simply depends on, are we, are we, you know, are we going to be in a position where we have, where we really want a quarterback, which is what we talked about earlier. Um, you know, if we are, if we're in a position where we want our QB, then stay there. I don't want that. I don't think that's right. I think we have our quarterback. He's still fairly young, very low tread on the tires and give him another season as the guy. And let's see, let's see what we could do for two or three more years. Um, I'm very confident. We'll figure that out. If we don't, well then pick your quarterback at five. Like that becomes to me like, well, that's it. It's binary. If we don't, meaning we, we resign Gino, um, depending on how it falls, you know, if Carter or Anderson happen to fall, you probably just take one of those two dudes and you say, thank you and figure it out. I don't think that's going to happen either. You know, I think, I think we're going to be in a scenario where they're off the board um, and that the five becomes really attractive because a team that, that is QB hungry wants to move up. That to me is the most likely scenario. So you go from five to seven or five to nine or something like that. Yeah. To me that I think that's a slam dunk. I think you hit, you hit the, you hit the button on that see what you can recoup. Maybe you get another, you get a second, maybe you get a, a you know, a third and something else or a first um, next year and get a, get our quarterback next year. You know, I, I would, yes. And I would prefer this year. Cause I really think we're in that window and I, I really want to recruit that. Well, you'll get one year. first if you go to seven or nine, but I'm saying as, the, Oh no, for sure. I, I totally get it. Yeah. I, I'd rather not get the 2024, but if that's, if that's how they frame it, sure. But I'd, I'd be okay with it. I'd be totally okay with them going back, trying to stay in the top 10 and um, really up upping their uh, their draft ability with some, with a one or two more like absolutely nice nice picks. Um, that would be I think um, probably almost ideal depending on if the board breaks the the way I, I kind of think it will. And if we get a 2024 Brandon, we need Adam to curse that team for next year, <laughs> <laughs> so we can have fun with That's this every true. year. That's true. Yeah. I should be I should be more into that idea. Did you have something on a trade back, or do you want to keep going, Brandon? I no, I think Clinton Clinton <laughs> okay. covered it pretty well. <laughs> okay, Funny. Jason Bonner, Jason Bonner on his draft question. 
Do you like, Brandon, what John Schneider has said about drafting best player instead of drafting for positional need? Do you like that philosophy statement? I, it's a great philosophy. It's one of the lies that general managers tell us every <laughs> single year, and they justify it in the way of saying, well, best player available means we take into account the needs of the team based on and and really the the best player. So, yeah, if if they if they were we really set, year. we yeah. got best players available last year, don't you think? I think because they had so many needs last yeah. year. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. Pick a position <laughs> where we didn't have a need. Right. Yeah. So it made it a whole lot easier to be flexible in that way of taking best player available. And maybe there's fewer of those needs this year, but I, I still see a lot of needs on defense. Do they need, they don't need to go corner early. They probably don't need to go safety early, especially if they re-sign Neil, but there's still a lot of spots on the offensive line, defensive line, linebacker. Tackle. We take yeah. a tackle at five. <laughs> and we'll say, I guess John meant what he was saying. Right. Yeah. And, and we'll all throw up and bark. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's no chance you're taking a tackle at, uh, at number five. And so I, I, it's a fine philosophy. It's just general managers are going to say that and they're going to find their own way to build their draft board based on the needs of the team and the best players to fill those needs. Anything to mm -hmm. add on that, Clinton? Yep. I have a scenario that I'd like to throw out there about, about best player available. Um, we trade down from five to whatever. Are you going to say uh, beyond? Yeah. I'm going to say, <laughs> yeah, I, I, is, is it beyond or Bijan? I, I would, Bijan, I would say it's Bijan. Yeah. I think Bijan, so. right. Um, yeah. I would, because not only do I like the shiny penny, I also like like the idea that this dude, you know, if you're looking, if you're looking, he's McCaffrey. At, he does everything. That's what I'm saying, man. If you're look, if you're, wh wh where was McCaffrey taken? Like twelfth overall, or fifth, or sixth? He wasn't first, right? He was, he was, I he think was he was top ten, was, though, wasn't he? I think he was. Yeah, okay. Well, okay, but still, but my my point being, right? If you know that this dude is the next Christian McCaffrey. And by the way, he, and, and maybe even better put the next actually more dynamic Debo Samuel, like the, the dude who, who could solve your, is there a Debo, difference? Well, uh, yeah, I think yeah, there's, there, a difference. there's a little difference. De <laughs> Debo has described himself as what, uh, you know, RB WR one or something like that. Wide receiver RB one. And, okay. uh, and I agree with that, right? He, he can be those things. Well, we, we need a third receiver and, then you don't got to bring back Penny, save save that $2 million. It's just, to me, it's like people are like, no, you can't do that. That That's outrageous. Why is that outrageous? Why is that not, a, you trade back, you're getting more capital. You got the 20th pick, so go get it, go get a guard at 20 or go get a defensive, you know, defensive edge guy at 20 or spend, spend the money uh, in free agency and, and boost up the line. Why is it outrageous? Why is it not a possibility? And if if he's sitting there, we're back at like nine. I'm just saying it won't shock me if we take yeah. him. And I don't think I'll be mad about it. I, I don't know if you guys have strong opinions on uh, on Rob. He's a dynamo. It's, it's one of the reasons why you have to grade the the draft as a whole and not just pick by pick. Because if he's the one offensive weapon that you go out and get, and then everybody else is trenches or yeah. you know needs on the defense. And you get to the end of the draft and you go, man, we filled all these needs at players. And maybe, maybe it's because that top interior defender type pass rusher guy wasn't there by the time the fifth pick rolled around. And then you're getting the top offensive weapon in the top 10. I, I, I have a heart. To, that was one of the things that came up in my discussion with Jim Nagy too. when he said, you mm -hmm. don't draft, you know, there's positions that you just don't draft that high. I'm like, are you yeah. sure? Yeah. <laughs> because yeah, you I, I can come up with guys where I can see them fall toward the back half of the first round and say, yeah, but is it really that like the fact that the Carolina Panthers took Christian McCaffrey with the eighth pick in the draft? Eighth, oh, eighth. Eighth. Is it is it really that bad considering the type now injuries obviously hampered him through some early seasons too, but you can't predict for injuries. He's and so if back. you're running getting backs, a dynamic yeah. player in the top 10 i i have a hard time saying no yeah you could put him on he, he could play that wide receiver three almost in, in a way yeah. he, he could be on the field with ken 
It'd be uh, it changes be the tough team. to pass it up. It changes if we the got, team overnight again. It's if he's just there at ten, and we're nine, and we dra- and we went back. Then that'd be tough to pass up. We need to deal with the interior offensive line, but that might be able to. Sounds like the third round and even into the fourth is possible. So we can get some more picks if we move back. Yeah, check this out. What if we move back to nine <laughs> and not only so we move back to nine, but then we get a second and a third and a fourth. So we got extra picks to deal with the interior line, which you wouldn't draft that high anyway. It's the defensive. It's the defense that I'd be concerned about. That's tough to get those awesome defenders later in the draft. It it is. It is. And you have to go solve for it and take other risk. I'm just saying, like if we're sitting at five and the, and either Levis or Stroud are there, there's going to be some teams that are like, that's our guy. And we will give you the trade Lance package of some sort for it. And then we get to move back and then potentially get Robinson. It's like, I, I, I've already convinced myself that I would be super intrigued by it. You know, it's, it's at at the very least, it's an interesting potential outcome. Um, Because the thing is, whoever takes him barring injury, you're getting a superstar like a superstar day one. Uh, now, if he's, and of course he's, he's in a, the position in the NFL that those dudes always get hurt the most because they touch yeah. the ball the most and they, the, the most contact um, makes sense. All good, but you're getting an absolute stud. You're getting the next super healthy Saquon. You're getting the next Christian McCaffrey. Who doesn't want that on their team? Like what yeah. team doesn't want that? It's just their best value is those first five years and you have them at a decent that's price. Exactly that's the only right. way. But but we could go on and on about this particular topic. <laughs> There's, I, I could go, I could argue the other side too, but we just don't have time for that. Uh, sure. Speaking of speaking of quarterback, Car Car piped in. This isn't a question, but she said, if John Schneider picks a quarterback, I trust him to judge that well enough. If he picks defense, I'll be very happy too. I like her positivity. I completely agree with Car Car. John knows his quarterbacks. If he takes one, I'm going to be stoked about who it is. But. I love this big trade. I love this big trade. That's what I'm hoping happens, but uh, I get yeah. her point. Yep. Uh, Jason, Jason Bonner has this question. Uh, I guess Brandon, or maybe it's Clinton. I don't know. It could uh, be Brandon. I, I've, I've, I've yucked on enough. Say you take a top D line prospect at five. How do you feel about taking a high end offensive skills player at 20 or 37? Someone like a Zay Flowers or Michael Meyer, Mayer. And then go back to focusing on defense and interior O line. Sounds like Jason wants the opposite of his first question. I don't think he likes the best player available by the way he asked this next question. What do you think, Brandon? Well, I, I think it's just that he would like a an offensive player at some point. And that's what I was getting at with the yeah. last discussion is that I, I think you you really do have to look at it as a whole and not necessarily where the guy falls in the draft. Because, shoot, there's a chance that the guy that we were just talking about, Robinson, he's mm-hmm. projected to go late first round uh, because yeah. nobody – wants to project a running back inside the top 20 because then they get flamed by all the uh <laughs> the analytics folks and shoot so with that 20th pick let's say that robinson's still there GMs don't care what they put in twitter no they i know they don't team. i know they oh, don't oh they don't want to get they don't want to get attacked by it's getting the to fans. the point where you you can't even project a running back in the top of the second round now so it, it just keeps slipping down the draft board and gms are going to take the guy that has a lot of talent that they see making the team better. So um, that's just what's going to happen. Yeah. And I, so the, I mean, the answer is, yeah, it's, I, I am okay with it. <laughs> yeah. He has all these lanes. I don't really, Jason, I don't want John to have a lane for draft pick five, a lane for 37, a lane for each position has to go there. I, I hope he at least has some, this is a player we got to have. Uh, I don't want an LJ Collier pick. Let's just put it that way. Oh, we yeah. got to get a defensive end. Did you have it anything is tough to add on having that fifth pick because there are so many things that can change your lane that can happen in those first four picks ahead of you, depending on what happens with quarterback, but depending on what happens with those defensive players, depending on who trades up into the top five, because then that can push guys back that maybe you hadn't intended to, to see pushback. So it's it, we're going to be playing a whole lot of what if uh, up until the draft. <laughs> That's <laughs> definitely what the show is about. Um, Clinton, Jake, EM, big daddy. 
he he actually uses the title of the show here. What if nice. we use two first round draft picks on defensive tackles? One second round on interior defense linemen, one second second on a third wide receiver, and use the rest of our picks to bolster our defense. How do you like that strategy, Clinton? Um, you know, I, that's a pretty <laughs> that's drafting for need, right? That's that's what yeah. we need, right? So uh, I'm I like I think he said the first two five and twenty on defensive yeah. tackles, right? That was yeah. his that was tackle, a defensive tackle. Def so he wants interior defensive line. He's yeah, obviously it's, letting guys go. Yeah. It is the but it's the absolute biggest need on the team. Yes, we need to add edge. I would profess it's harder um, to find defensive tackles uh, that yeah. that are that that are that impactful. And if you um, looked at our edge roster, we got quite a few outside linebackers. Alton Robinson. Yeah. Well, if, I mean, if we, he gets we, back healthy, right. Correct. We got so, like four guys that'll be on the roster next year. Wosu, Robin, yeah. uh, Taylor. Mafe. Yeah. Mafe. Mafe. So, so we got four guys that are fairly young and successful. Uh, I mean, I'd like to squeeze a dynamic guy in there, but I don't know if there's one there. Sorry. Go ahead. No, no, it's okay. No, I, I, what I like about the, the strategy, especially the first two picks is yeah. I never mind doubling down uh, because like your chance of one of them hitting it's, we talked about this when we got Cross and Lucas. Now turned out they're both good. Like that, that was amazing, right? Um, can we can we double dip the next year? Can we get two defensive tackles uh, the next year who are both good? That that would that would change the team tasty e immediately. It's immediate. And if it and if they're not both good, your chance of getting one who is really above average, solid, you know, the the B the B plus to to Pro Bowl level is pretty good. Taking a dude at five and a guy at twenty, and Adam went through some of those numbers on the last, uh, the last flagship on episode 399. So from a strategy perspective, I don't mind it one bit. You you could get a double dip. That's phenomenal home run. You change the team, your chance of one of the two being quite good. goes really, really high with that redundancy. That seems pretty smart to me. It's an absolute huge need. The rest of it. I think he's hitting places. We need, we need, we need third wide receiver. We need edge. So it all makes sense. I like it. Would you take the fifth pick or trade back or trade up? If you had, if you had the option, what would be your preference? Uh, we haven't quite heard your take on this, Brandon. What's your, what's your preference on the fifth pick? I'm trading up. I'm, I'm okay with trading up. If you can get it in a reasonable type of deal where, gosh, I, I haven't put a lot of thought into trading up because it's just not something that the Seahawks do. And I would be surprised if it were to happen. We'd have to love that quarterback, right? Or would it, would it be? I don't even know if it would have to be a quarterback. I'd be fine with it, with it being a dynamic defensive player too. If they think if he's we, Chris Jones. I mean, if, if mm. Carter can be Chris Jones, I'll, I'll trade my whole draft to get Chris Jones. Sure. Yeah. That's well, maybe not the whole draft, but yeah. Close. <laughs> Pretty close. If pretty you know close, he's Chris yeah. Jones, it's right. pretty close. Yeah, but, you then you give up that late first round pick if that's what it's going to take. If yeah. you think he can be that type of impactful player moving forward, that's a big swing. It's a big yeah. swing to take, and and it could be the swing too if you think that that's what you need at quarterback to to find the future franchise guy, and you don't want to wait and see if he falls. I I just I think there is so much more benefit to waiting to see how those first four picks play out before you make a decision, because then you have that potential of knowing if there's somebody else who wants to move up to where then you can benefit from their yeah. aggressiveness. And then you have just a better chance of, of hitting on guys throughout the draft. You can maybe there be more flexible. Chance. Yeah. There is a chance we get one of the two big defensive players because yeah. uh, sure. who's wanting defensive players that are in the front four Chicago would, but I think they'd love to get one of those big draft halls and trade back. Right. I mean, they need just, it. Right. Yeah. So, <laughs> they, so they have a lot be, of needs. So that would pull one of the teams that might be moving in there to get a quarterback, uh, yeah. which of the other ones that are in front of us would already have a quarterback such settled. Um, Houston is kind of iffy, they, right? Because they're taking they, a quarterback. They're getting a quarterback. That's what that's what that's what that's what people say. Like they're like they're they're gonna go quarterback. Colts. So. Colts need one. Yeah. 
and the Cardinals, I mean, they, they won't, they'll probably, they, I wouldn't think that they would draft a quarterback, but they're going to need a quarterback probably with the Kyler issue, but you could probably find there a veteran. Are so, there are so many quarterbacks. Yeah. Free they're probably going year. the outside pass rusher, right? Would you, they just I would lost think one. so. Yeah. I would think so based on yeah. the, their team needs. Okay. Yeah, they so, so they would so be the, the ones Bears... that you have to worry about taking the yeah. guy that you want. If the bears drop back, we got a shot at Carter, I think still. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. And, okay. And, 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 and you know, there'll be a combine hero, right? Javon Walker was not the first overall pick this, this time last year, he wasn't projected like the, he, he's the guy, he's the guy, right? It yeah. wasn't. Go, it was go about- back and look at the pre combine mock drafts and see how different it is compared yeah. to post combine compared yeah, to last year. Yeah. Actual draft. Point. Actual. Right. Exactly. So for Frost, do you prefer if both defenders are gone to trade down? Brandon? If both defenders are gone, then trade down. I, or do you want to go? Depends. I, there's Miles Murphy out of Clemson who's projected in that top 10 area um, by some. And so depending on how, but you just yeah, if to- there's, it, it goes back to the combine, right? Do they? Yeah. Is there is there somebody who makes the the jump for the Seahawks in in their mind um, with that too? Yeah, yeah that, that's an interesting po- uh, question. I think to dive into. I'm I'm personally not into the combine hero riser with that oh. fifth pick. With that fifth pick, I'm just not into the holy crap. Not the fifth pick. We want Tariq, production. Tariq Woolen jumped out and his his four two six. That was the fifth round, right? Um, I don't know. I just, I just want something so much. I want the dude on tape who Proven. like sh- who showed out in the biggest games against the best talent out there in college. That the game in game out, that the person was a record. And there's just not that many of them, is what it boils down to. So um, I just, I'm, I'm just not into a combine hero at five. It's just too risky for me. Okay. All right, Clinton Karkar asked, "What level of trust do you have for how we'll be drafting this year? Are you gonna?" give John Snyder the benefit of the doubt if you're not quite sure about a few of those high picks or do you not trust you'll do something great with those picks kind of like what level of Mm. Karkar wants to know what level of trust do you have in Snyder's draft this year yeah it's 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 a mixed bag right so like being a a Pollyanna about it is 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 not what I want to do I want to I, I will I will whoever we take, I will convince myself they're amazing and I'll be fine. I'll be fired up about it. Um, it worked last year. So let's keep doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Even, even the Jordan Brooks, uh, you know, selection was like, who, um, you know, he's, he's a pretty good linebacker. Right. Um, and he was not, not known and people were screaming for, for Patrick queen, but, but we, we took Brooks um, with the fifth pick or anything in the top 10. I, I do have a high level of trust because we haven't had that many that high uh, really at all because we've been yeah. a good team. Earl, Russell, Okun, Cross. That's those, are, it. those are good picks. All three of those are good, right? So three. bang, bang, bang. Three for yeah, three. So, so high. And then I really, really have a high level of trust that we, that we could get. Um, I'm, I'm, I asked on, uh, we, you know, on Twitter, we were talking the other day about, well, what's, what's more intriguing, the fifth pick or the 20th pick? Actually, you asked that, Brandon. Um, and to me, the 20th pick is actually a bit more intriguing because there's so much more open and that's where, where you can get the top center or go get the top guard or the second best guard who might, who might project as somebody else's best guard where Jim Nagy's like, no, you don't take that at five. That's a waste. That's a waste. Um, I don't know, man, a, a starting right guard who could play for you for you know a decade potentially and Brandon, I think that's what you were trying to get at with, with Jim on the interview right. too. It's like, well, no, that's, I, you know, but we have, we have, we're in such a unique situation that we've got these, these two in the top 20 and three in the yep. top 37. And, um, and that's the thing. Like if Steve Hutchinson is yeah, there at right. five, <laughs> why do you not take him there at five? You don't risk him falling or risk yeah. trading back and somebody else grabbing him. No, if you are sure that that dude is a future all pro, even at yeah. guard, yeah. Why don't you take that down? Yeah. And maybe that guy doesn't exist, but no, I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. One of the, I, I, one of the I'm picks at 20 is going to be great. You know, there's, there's going to be a Montez sweat. There's going to be, yeah. uh, there's going to be a, a Watt. There's going to be somebody in the twenties. That's going to be great. It's just harder to know 
the odds reduce like 20 to 28 you're probably going to get two really awesome players and then there's going to be some decent starters and there's going to be a bust in there yeah, lj got- collier could be in there <sighs> it could, it could even be a boat <laughs> yeah so do you trust that he's he hasn't always done great in the 20s do we trust that schneider's going to this time well that that the, to to just to put a fine point on that i trust it because i think in that 20th spot is where we're going to go guard or center and that's okay. why i have that trust like or we trade back and we actually get a, a, a even a larger it's gonna be set, set of it's going to be a great guard pick like carpenter Cool. Well, let's 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 keep let's keep Glowinski this time, right? Because he actually ended up yeah. having a good career, right? So there's there's yeah. dudes that we that we've nurtured for three four years and let walk that end up being really good. Um, let's not do that anymore. So, but that's All why right. I trust it because it's just it sets up for that part of the draft to get the type of dude that we still need. We still need we need an offensive lineman in the interior, and that's a perfect area to go get one. So my trust level is high. Okay. Good. We got to go to our final question. I'm going to have to say sorry to Garen, Jaron Taylor. Do you guys know how to say his name? Yeah. Yeah. Garen. Okay. Garen Taylor has a great question, but that's going to take some time for explaining on the three, four, four, three. Maybe Brandon and Adam can get into that at another time during one of their shows. Um, We could talk about it, but go on and on with some of the variations just to focus on these three categories. We had one more question here. So Brandon Boyer's biceps asks, is there a player you'd be okay with trading away our first rounder for? And then he says, not even Dicker the kicker. But uh, <laughs> I have no idea. That must be an inside joke for you there. Is there a player you'd be okay trading our first round? One of our, he just says our. So is there a player out there to say, let's go ahead and trade 20 or let's trade five for this player? Yeah. If, if Kansas City calls and says, you can have Creed Humphrey <laughs> for your first round draft pick, you say yes. <laughs> for, for pick 20 but not number five sure number think? five even you would do it for number five okay how about you is there somebody out there uh, there's somebody out there uh clinton that you that you trade one of our firsters for yeah there is there is and with a team that um has made sometimes bizarre so i looked at this i thought it was a really cool question yeah it is and, a cool I, and I want to try and find it find a player that i would be like yep I'd swap number five for right now. Um, and with a team that historically has done some weird things with top level players, where you're like, ooh, that's interesting. And sometimes Tyler it's, Murray. No, no. Yeah, right. Sometimes it's, it's worked out really, really well. Um, and other times it's been like, it's been like, wow, you gave up on a dude way too soon. That team is the New England Patriots and the player is Matt Judon. I would happily. Matt Judon is an absolute monster. 15 yes. and a half sacks this year. So when you have like 15 or 16 last year, absolute game wrecker, game wrecker. And the Pats do these things where they think the guy's about to decline and they'll ship them. They'll, they, they, they did it with Chris. Or they just don't want to pay at that position at the, right. the amount that it's going to cost. Right. The right. next year, whatever it is, when, it, when it's up, yeah. they're like, well, we're not, we're not going to pay there. So that's my guy. I mean, you know, Quentin Nelson's another one too. It's like, yeah, I want to go get the, one of the best guards in the game who's who's had some injury but still yeah th- those are two dudes but man Matt Judon th- once again it's like would would you give up that kind of pick for the guarantee yeah absolutely sure. I, no, I would so no doubt about that Judon's my dude there he he would be when the pat when the pat signed him it wasn't even a huge contract it was like a good contract and I was like that's an absolute steal it guy's a monster and he's been just freaking phenomenal it would All make right. more sense to go get an impactful player on the defensive line. The thing is, is that I don't think that you could just like, if you're going for a double digit sack type guy, that is a huge difference maker. I don't think even the a one, if the fifth pick overall is, is going to be enough. I, I would go, I would do more for Judah. Yeah. He's, he's okay. absolutely, I mean, he's still fair. He's still pretty young. He's, you know, so if it's like a fifth and a third, I mean, the fifth pick overall in the third, I do it. I yeah. do it because he's he's that good, you know. So. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons why too. You wait until the pick is until you're on the clock with the pick to make that move. Yeah, because then you know who you're potentially giving up versus right. if you trade it now, then you you have no idea what you're giving up. I mean, I can't believe the Eagles pulled off the AJ trade last year in the draft. Was what pick was that? Wasn't it? Yeah, like the late the end first, the, right? Yeah, late first. That that was. Yeah. You never know when some of those things might show up all of a sudden. That seemed like out of nowhere. I don't think right. anybody was expecting that. 
the entire Eagles offseason in retrospect is like is like holy crap. <laughs> and that was good, just a, not a very smart move by the Titans. Yeah. 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 Ours was pretty good. Our offseason was pretty good. Oh, we did real well, but just, we're lacking on defense. We can see that. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah. Great questions, Flockers. Boy, that was a lot. I obviously didn't need to add anything there. You got a double show worth out of it. Uh, anything before we say goodbye, gentlemen? Uh, we've we've gone late into the midnight, the burning the late oil there in Connecticut. Yes, the, the eastern side. No, this has been fun, and uh, you know, just uh, thank you to, to the flock. And certainly, one of the one of the reasons that you're in there in the first place is because, uh, well, because you get to it's, you're not in there so you can ask these questions, but but. The fact that you are in there and you get to generate such good questions, um, I don't know, just, just something fun. And another another reason we, we love being part of this with you. Um, so for folks out there that might be on the fence about it or freeloading, as, as Adam will, will guilt you into, hey, three bucks a month gets you in the Discord, uh, get to the Facebook Ring of Honor, follow on YouTube, click the like, do the whole thing already. Overall, it was a super, super fun season. And Phil, I don't know if you heard, it was... Um, Maybe it was a couple episodes ago, Brandon. You read an email where somebody was given given some love to Phil. Did you catch that at yeah, the end of the yeah. uh, an episode a couple a couple of times ago, Phil? I didn't hear that part. You know, yeah. I guess my ear doesn't spark for my uh, name, but I do listen to all the flagship shows. Sometimes I'm doing things while I'm listening, so I might have missed that. No, uh, maybe quite... I thought my wife was my saying my name, and so I responded in the same kind right, of way. But, right. Uh, Oh, I, a, I appreciate nice. that. that, that yeah. I appreciate that. If it was, if in some way value has been added to your fan experience and I could play a role in that, then, then that's fun for me. So I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, it was, it well, was awesome. And if folks want to get in the flock, you can go to get in the flock.com. Maybe we'll be doing more of these coming up and then yeah, shoot. It, it makes it a whole lot easier on Phil if he just gets to pull the questions <laughs> rather than come up with them himself. And it's the off season and, and Phil deserves a little bit of a break for all of the great work that he put in during the regular season. So yeah, I we, we might push that off to our producers within the flock. I do enjoy the off season. I hope to get to do another off season show at some point if, uh, uh, when the time works out, but gentlemen, what if we say go Hawks, go Hawks, go Hawks. <laughs>